Hi everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Home. So uh, today I'm going to talk about water harvesting and I built a really clever way to water harvest off of uh, your container homes. I've got the calculations here for how much you think you can get off of um, water harvesting and then I'll drop out to the video where I actually uh, build this uh, little uh, cool little way to collect water immediately from your containers as soon as they're delivered. Um, but <clears throat> a couple of different things here. Uh, taking a look at just uh, just your how uh, water off the top of your containers alone, three thousand gallons is uh, how much the average household uses per month. Uh, I went ahead and went to the EPA site, and uh, I gathered up the details of the EPA. And there's a water efficiency there for single families, so uh, they do a breakdown. There's eighteen gallons worth of toilet flushing. Now, I'm a single man, so though I'll end up using less than 2,145, uh, 2,100 gallons um, per month. But uh, taking a look at what we can capture off of a roof here. So, uh, four, uh, eight foot by 40 foot uh, high, high uh, uh, shipping container, your regular shipping container, your square footage will be the same. If it's only a 20 footer, you'll get half of this. So, uh, and these are best case situation. So per inch of water that drops, um, you've got 320 uh, square foot on that particular size container. And per inch of water that drops, you can expect 0.632 gallons. And that's in a perfect world. If there's no evaporative loss, if there's no runoff, um, if you don't have an early clean system so that the it sweeps your uh, first affluent clean and off. So that would be uh, in a perfect world. So basically that's 202 gallons of water per inch of rain. So taking a look here at what to expect in... Um, uh, my my neck of the woods, Flatonia, Texas. Uh, if you take a look at the, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Let's see. Uh, underneath U.S. US climate data. You can see what your month to month is for uh, your particular zip code. Just put in your uh, the. Um, house that you got, the location that you got. And of course, I, I went ahead and put in uh, Flatonia, Texas, but you could put in any other address that you'd want up in there. And then you would be able to, uh, to calculate how much rain falls. So you'll see that in Flatonia, historically, uh, January is 20, uh, 2.47 inches, February, March, April, May. Well, all of these have been for the last year have been about 25% of what the national average, we are in a huge drought. So anyway, I took all of these numbers. These are best case numbers. And you'll see that May is supposed to be one of my highest points of having uh, rain. And it's, there's just nothing out there. It's maybe rained an inch and a half, maybe, if I'm generous. And uh, maybe June's going to line up the same way. Uh, anyway, I took all of those numbers and I plugged them in. So the 6.32. So if we are going to get an average amount of rainfall of 2.7, then my first container would generate about 500 gallons of rainwater uh, for a month. And uh, you'll see I'm down in a household needs 3,000 gallons per month uh, to operate. So I'm a long ways off. And if I put gutters on both of them, then I'm, I'm getting close. I'm up to 1,000 gallons. Now, 1,000 gallons might work for me. In addition, I'm setting up an evaporator that might get three to seven gallons per day, which means I might be replacing what I use as a man. If I, I'm careful with my showers and I use a composting toilet, I might be able to make this fit. Uh, in between my two containers, I have the potential to put a roof in. I don't yet. And it'll be a 20 by 20 uh, domed roof. Uh, really nice. And that'll be 1,250 uh, gallons of water. So I can get about 2,000 gallons of water per month uh, in the environment. I've already bought the, the materials that I need to build a cistern. Uh, I did go crazy. My cistern is a 5,000 gallon cistern max. And cause I am never going to fill that up. I will never top that off. So if I take all of the months of rain that I have and their averages and the, um, the amount of rain that I'll capture from each month, I get about 34,000 gallons of rain. So that's enough to run a house. Um, but I'm in a deficit situation right now because of the drought. 
And because I'm in construction, I'm using a lot more water for cleanup, for making mud, and for doing this. Now, I have an ace in the hole in that I have a very large, probably, oh, 30,000 gallon stock tank out in my field I can use for making mud, and I'm going to. <laughs> uh, but that could dry up. It could theoretically dry up. But for you who have a uh, have storage containers, you wonder how much rain can you get off the roof? Well, per inch, inch of rain, I calculate 202.24 gallons. And that's best case scenario uh, if you could catch every drop. And then you could go to the EPA website that I gave you, the usaclimateday.com. And you can look up what yours is. And then I'll go ahead and uh, uh, put this, these links down in the uh, uh, YouTube channel so you can have them. And then you can read your EPA estimates on the average household. Uh, and you can calculate if you're putting together three containers with a roof over the top of it, et cetera, et cetera. You can figure out how much water you can collect. Um, but for me in Texas, I'll be just making it just right for my house. Uh, even if I have family over, or I um, guest or visitors or uh, you know, do something crazy where I'm consuming water. Uh, I'm just going to make it annually just right with what I can catch from the roof. So um, now I'm going to jump over to the other part where I did something really cool for temporary gutters. If you don't want to drill and tap, I used uh, magnets and duct tape. And listen, it was so strong and held so well. It held through a couple of major storms. We're talking 30 and 40, 50 mile an hour winds. And I had to go up when I did want to take down this temporary gutter. And I had to manually cut them down from the uh, from the roof. In addition, they certainly met my expectations of generating the uh, 500 gallons of water or so uh, from that environment. Now, eventually, I'll put gutters all the way around that and I'll start capturing it. But this worked as a temporary situation. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Well, hey, it's Stephen at uh, Thousand Year Home. So I'm ending the day. The, the rain and cold is has defeated me, but uh, I got my supplies. It took me all, all day long and I could only find one barrel in the whole city, so I bought it. But I'll find somebody who sells some uh, steel drums. I need a steel drum to mix my concrete. I need, I prefer to have some steel drums underneath there temporarily until I uh, do my final, uh, <clears throat> my final design so i will catch the top of the house but you know i'm going to cover it with concrete you know I'll, I'll level it so that the water runs one way and i'll have a formal uh water harvesting treatment the only thing i'm trying to do here is to uh, uh make concrete <laughs> and so i'm going to make concrete and the, the evening weather is drive the sun down and uh, i'm going to have to exit here shortly so let me see what i've got done here so you can see the water, the water comes up and builds up here. Uh, so if I can start capturing it, I'll be in good shape. <clears throat> uh, while I was gone, gone this afternoon, I, I uh, see that the, this is all filled up with water. You know, a couple inches of water in there. I have a stock tank and, that I could dip a bucket out of for convenience. And then I have my... Uh, my 55 gallon poly drum so that was a hundred bucks uh even and this was uh 149 uh again if i had spent more time on craigslist i could save a few dollars here and there but uh what is uh this day and age when i find something i have to buy it and i spent all day running around i went to home depot and uh picked up some of my uh order that they didn't couldn't find last week uh, man, I just need people to deliver goods and material out here so that I'm working instead of chasing things around. And uh, I'm waiting for that 911 address so I can start having people come and do deliveries out here. Right now, it wouldn't be easy to find. So, But uh, the day is done. I've almost accomplished what I wanted to do. And all right what a difference a day will make so i'm out here on the farm again yesterday i ran around in the cold and the rain and uh, today bright and sunny high of 53 expected so it's still a little nippy it's 41 right now but uh today i'm going to get the uh oh hopefully get the uh eaves up or gutters up so i can collect water and then i want to uh 
start working on the new driveway so that people can just come in and instead of this long route around that actually touches into my neighbor's property and he's kind enough to let me use that jug handle but uh good neighbors you know you don't you don't use them uh and abuse them too long you do your proper proper steps so that you're still friends right so uh, i'm gonna get that set up i got my camera over there doing time lapse photo so uh the idea here is to hang the gutters on magnets and suspend them and then i'll put a little uh eave across the top a drip edge across the top made of uh electrical tape now uh this isn't a permanent solution it's not the not anything other than to gather enough water for me to be able to uh, make concrete get these foundations once i get them up in the air uh, so I went to Home Depot. They said the order that was supposed to be here three weeks ago will be here in two weeks. So March 19th. So I signed on the house January uh, 18th. So uh, one month gone. Uh, pretty good progress. But if I get the eaves done, the gutters done today, I want to go and cut logs down. So I understand how many logs I have and uh, I want to set up a mill. Uh, let me rotate around. The mill will be right on the other side of those trees, right where I'm starting to pile up the brush. I'm going to save the brush and start cutting the uh, anything that I can use for a coyote fence, which is uh, cedar woven together with wire, uh, because I start might start making coyote fence. Uh, and also I can use coyote fence uh, decoratively on top of the uh, house when I'm done with it. So in the middle part, there'll be a uh, low raised roof and then those will be wrapped in uh, aircrete with the appropriate uh, Santa Fe Mission style Adobe style windows and I bought some stained glass windows that I'm going to be used for just a little bit of flavor I want to have a have a, uh, oh, a cloister kind of a vibe uh, Southwest Mission uh, sanctuary kind of a vibe in there not too I'm not overly religious but uh, just a little flavor so all right, I feel good about this gutter. I hope to get it up in a couple hours on both sides, and away we'll go. All right, I started about 10.30, it's one o'clock, so uh, I've got the uh, one end for 40 foot all the way. I used magnets to hold the, uh, the tops. So I've got a 55 gallon barrel here, so hopefully I could start catching some water. Me. So it's dry fitted, so I don't know how sturdy that is. I think I might put a screw or two in there. And uh, some of those are 75 pound magnets, so they're pretty strong, and there's 150 pound. The 35 pound magnets, they couldn't do anything. So uh, let me get up there and chase that so you can see how strong it is or not. Okay, so this is, this is it in microcosm. So I've, I've zip tied everything to a 75 pound magnet. So, you know, if I pull on that, it, it's, it's pretty solid all the way down. We'll see once water comes in. And then every now and then I have a 155, 150 pound magnet with some bungee cords. That should help hold it. Uh, and then I've been, and I haven't finished it up yet, but I've been chasing this thing, including the seams with uh, electrical tape or uh, gray tape rather a la Mistbuster. So uh, I think that this will hold together through through the construction. <laughs> the irony of calling <laughs> calling this thousand year house and building something with duct tape and magnets does not escape me. So but uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to weld on this thing yet or pop holes in it yet. It's uh, not ready for me to do changes on it. I bought them and I put them in place before I did any design work on them. So uh, with uh, things being the way they are right now in the world, I, I didn't mess around. When I see something, I, I buy it. So, uh, and now at least I can one side, uh, I won't have time. I don't want to do the other side today. I've got some lumber I want to cut down instead. So, uh, but one side I can be catching rain. I'll pick up and I'll do uh, water on the next side another day. And this is Steve for a thousand year homes. And I want to thank you for joining me.